Thank you, Lord, for this morning. We give him praise and we thank him for his goodness. And we come but wake up in the morning and sing the beautiful song that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. They are new every morning, every morning, every morning. When we remain in this state, we will see his goodness, his mercies overflowing from every angle and then is all miracle and testimony at all times in our lives amen so today we are going to look into the love of jesus you know using his own words as we're looking at what jesus said and did we're going to pick out just a few of them just to um exalt his name and to encourage each and every one of us this morning father we thank you this morning we bless you lord we pray that your word coming forth will be encouragement comfort to everyone Heavenly Father, especially those who have been in the race for years to remind themselves again what we signed up to and what you've been to us and what you're doing. And for those who are coming on to join, those who are going to hear this word and say, Lord Jesus, I'm coming into you, may they to experience this amazing, glorious experience that you've brought us in. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So today we're going to look in into some scriptures where Jesus told us himself how much he, love, he loves us. And these words are a and amen. They are certain. They are sure. They are not just any other word anyone will just pick out. They are not just um, take them for taking sake. No. There is no greater time to feel God love, God's love than then when you are coasting through the billows of life. Ordinarily, when you're relaxed, you know, I usually tell people when you are not thirsty and you're given a cup of water, you don't appreciate it more as much as you would have if you were thirsty. If someone comes now and says, oh, it's so sunny and then please have a, um, a bottle of water, you say thank you. If in your bag you've got two and even you have um, a cold, a little cold box with you where you've kept the very cold ones, you will say thank you and take it from the person. But once some, you see someone, you can say, do you need a cup of water? Do you need a bottle of water? You can hand over. But when you are very thirsty, very thirsty, and nothing with you, you have no water, you have nowhere to run to, I mean, even the drop of dusty rain, you will appreciate it. That's the way it goes. So we experience God's mercy, his goodness, his care, his divine coverage. We can only feel it when we are passing through fire. Then will we know. Now is daylight. If anyone flashes light in daylight, it doesn't really mean anything. You will even ask why. Why would you why would it happen? Why would you do that? Like these days it's now law and requirement that every car their low lights are on. So in the blazing sun it's like, oh please, we don't need extra. But in darkness, even the faintest light of the touch of a candle means a lot and that's what i just want to share with us this morning and when you realize god's love you see and you live in it you accept it it's like being encased being properly encased you know when we wrap packages and we put all the bubble wraps and bubble wraps to protect the fragile instrument or technology under so that it doesn't get hot or shock in, in on transit 
that's the way it is in Christ Jesus. He wraps us so much. And I mean, the buffer is not like anyone the packaging companies do. This is divine. That even in the heat, it looks like you're under an air conditioned. Even when you're thrown stretched to a stone, you bounce back again because you're well encased. You're well packaged. There's a lot of buffer. There's a lot of bubble wrap. But this time, divine ones. Amen. It feels good. It feels very, very good. I mean, I just, I woke my daughter up this morning and I said to her, how do you feel? It looks like nothing happened because we had a very close near death experience yesterday. But we came out from the car. And then I say, Favor, how do you feel? He says, Mom, I'm still dazed. That's what it is like being encased by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's how it feels that we are hid in Christ in God. You come out and you're looking at what has happened and you're like, hmm, perfect. I know we are in a time where a lot of things have happened. Don't allow those things to take your eyes and focus away from the Lord. We are in a time where we have accepted you know, so many evil, murder, hate, bitterness, anger, jealousy. We've accepted them. We've accepted ordinariness. We've accepted, well, that's the way it is with me. That's the way. No, we need to change it. Amen. No, it's not. We know we live in a time where the world is entrenched in insincerity, deception, and then pain all over. And people have learned to get on with their pains. You know, people said to you, get on with it. And he says, yeah, resilience. And because we put on resilience, we've accepted the pain and carried through. In Christ Jesus, it is not so. Not at all. We've in a time where people are accept servitude, you know, pray. that favor was showing me something, something and then um, some um, reviews, people were talking about workplaces and they were saying not all workplaces are for you. Some places you just get in and, <laughs> and realize that you've just been, you've just dropped yourself in a pot of boiling oil. And somebody who says, jump out immediately. Don't stay in that environment. You will only hurt yourself. You know, we're getting to say, well, I need to pay my bills. I need to leave. I need to buy. I need to. So I have to endure negative because everywhere seems negative. Sorrows, disappointment, sickness, just as we're to now, oh, get on and live with these. We can sure stand on the promises of the of the Lord. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. There's a lot of deception there. This is everywhere. Just get on. Deception. So you can see that everything around us has happened so much that we are accepting it. But today. Oh, everyone listening to me, there are things that are unacceptable. Believe me. Amen. There are things that we can say, no, we are not going to accept it. And the only way not to accept it is by renewing our mind in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, and be renewed. I beseech you, therefore, my beloved brethren. Paul is beseeching us where to find ourselves in, what is acceptable, and then how to renew. We need to renew. And don't take the old, don't take what is out there as the numb. Let's see. John chapter 16. The beautiful words of our Lord Jesus. And I want you to hang on on this word and say, yes, Lord, I'm going to hang on on it. 
from verse 25 to 29 the bible says these things have i spoken unto you in proverbs but the time cometh when i shall no more speak unto you in proverbs but i shall show you plainly of the father at that day you shall ask in my name amen ask in my name and i say unto you that i will pray to the father for the father himself loveth you do you know that that's what we want to bring up this morning you are loved don't accept satan's whisper to tell you you are not loved you are left alone you're deject you're rejected you're by yourself it's all gone now it cannot be mended anymore just accept it no look at what jesus said here in that day you ask anything in my name we need to stop saying okay lord i i want okay if and if and if and if he says ask what do you want amen Am I talking to you and I've not experienced it? I can fill your ears with stories. I mean, if you want to fill it, even yesterday, even today, ask, what do you want? The car was playing up. We kept hearing this cranky noise. Send it out there to the garage. They looked and says, no, you can't go. And I said, well, Lord, it's time to ask. This vehicle, Satan has fought fought glaringly openly this one is not hidden or we perceived it or we can sense it this one is open face to face battle but we are going to travel we will come back in the name of yeshua amen as i kept driving and then the family was talking going to kent i said nothing i kept on decreeing said the lord says ask if they can't see anything, then nothing is seen. This noise, in the name of Jesus, you take us and we will be back. I have asked my father, I've sealed it. Brethren, that's it. Ask. What do you want the Lord to do? You know, the children have not, we've been there and then we've been looking out and says, oh, four of them all in one go you know when you have your children packed together this one is a year older than a year eight months older than this a year eight months older than the next one and you, ah he's okay but time will come things will be happening at the same time because of the proximity of their ages I am experiencing that so to drive now is all in one go and I'm like hey Lord what do I do we need to get a small car. We just saw that one. And we remember the Bible says, ask. It's too new to be asked. But the Bible says, ask. So I just looked at them, looked at favor. I said, what do we do? Pointed it to say, we want this. Thank God for Pastor Moody. And thank God for those the Lord used to get the car for us. But we asked what we wanted. And he came. Glory be to God. Axe. Axe. I felt so funny last week. Extremely funny. And it's like, what is this? And what came to my mind? What do you want? And I said, that I may behold. And that's it. That's it, brethren. From last, today is one week, Saturday, last two week felt so raw. Extremely raw. He said, what do you want? I said, my wholeness. So then get into the car, carry on, do what you want to do. That's it. Brethren, in the evening around 7 p.m., I felt so much as if I'm in the 150% of health, as if nothing happened. And I said, what? He said, you asked. Ask. Jesus said, ask anything in my name. My father will do it because ye have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. Amen. And I came forth from the father. So put your faith to action. Believe the father. What other things? 
could should we look at are we looking at this morning second one same John 15 from 7 to 16 take your time read it marinate them rejoice in them dance in them he says if you abide in me and my word abide in you you shall ask what you will and it shall be done herein is my father glorified if you abide you know you abide you are abiding in him hey you know that song that says i know he loves me and i love him too wow and you're in that state glorifying him in all things singing and making melody in your heart basking I was reading the book of Psalms and Psalm 148 was so much for me to finish in one day I don't know if I, I read it almost six times I still carry on I was just reading it joy unprecedented and I don't know what to do to dance with my hand praise him exalt him seeing who he is wonderful father loving father summer and winter springtime and harvest looking at all of them beautiful yes we boxed in the sun this last few days and it looks like white fire is going you know popping up from here and there even in our environment popping up from here and there brethren but I look and I said, wow, Lord, may we rejoice in you. The winter that brought all the sicknesses and all the cold virus. And we are not looking up to see how you brought 40 degrees to melt them away. Hallelujah. Awesome God. Powerful one. So abide in him. It's all done. And look at it. the Lord says, as the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Jesus loves you. He loves us. Absolutely. No stone unturned. Powerful love. Beautiful one. Remember it. That's why he saved us. That's why he gave us the grace to receive him. And to be in him. Say, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that I, you, all of us should be called the children of God. Is enough. Is enough. You know, when people come from a certain race or certain tribe or certain families or just their family names makes, opens the door. Just family names. That's it. Just family names. People want to see. People want to shake. People want to get their signature. Just the name attached to them. They became heroes that people are worshipping. Young ones want to be like them. I'm the son and the daughter of the king. I bear his signature all over me. Wow. The gates of hell will move. They will bow principalities and power difficult situations you will come forth as God so behold what manner of love what manner of love what manner of love it's too much brethren it's too much you're getting into the kitchen you look you look at the children you look these past two three four months is huge 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 testimonies for us is absolutely practical experience of the love of Elohim enjoy it it's for all of us get it for yourself don't allow what is going on to put you in blindness no don't allow that in John chapter 11 the people sat there oh look at how much he loved Lazarus when Jesus wept in verse 35 verse 36 people say behold they said behold how much he loved him this man who loved him who made the blind could see could he not have made him to live I want this to keep resounding behold how much he loved him that's you and I 
He loves us. If he could make the blind to see, please don't just keep it in your heart. Speak it out. As you're traveling, speak it out. As you meet that situation, speak it out. If he could divide the Red Sea, Lord, thank you. Mm. Moving straight into it. It would divide. If he could raise Lazarus from the dead. Mm. Speak it to yourself. Lord, this is my turn. Amen. It's my turn. Let's learn to say, it's my turn. And then poise yourself for the experience, for the joy, for the miracle. Hallelujah. You would better get into that. There's no other way. This is me. This is where I do it. Yeah, my children says mom is funny. Not really. I speak out my faith. I know that the Bible says what you said it is, that's what it will be. The Bible says, and God said to Adam, name these things. What he named them is what it is. What you name your children is the a name they will bear. Name it. Speak it. Hallelujah. Lord, how much he loved. He still loved me. So, Martha says, oh, he's thinking. For he had been in the grave for how many days? Four days. He's thinking. I want you to start speaking to that thing stinking right now. That thing you think has been there for four days, four years, 40 years, 400 years. If you can get back to your great great grandfather and you're told, oh, you inherited it, or your own in the family, speak to it. And he said to them, roll away the stone. Amen. Roll away the stone. Run, Peter, run. The stone is rolled away. Today, speak to that stone that had covered this stinking situation, this stinking circumstance, this stinking being. Speak to it. The Bible says, Behold how he loved. Put your name there. Behold how he loved grace. Put your name right inside there. It's time for miracle. It's time to experience it. The stone is rolled away. Tell that stinking things. Just keep writing them, mentioning them. Speak them out loud where you are in your room. It's time for a miracle. Tell them you are rolled away. All the difficulties rolled away. Amen. Even if I'm in ignorance. I don't know anything. The Bible says he had compassion on the, the ignorant and on them that on the way. Even if I don't know him, I don't have to know all the Bibles. But the one I know now, he said he loved me. And the stinking thing on behind this sealed stone is alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Even in blindness. Matthew 20, 34, Jesus had compassion on them. Both spiritual and physical blindness will be opened today. Do you believe him? I believe. I believe him. And he's happening. Yes. Do you remember that song? God said it. And I believe it. And that settles it. Oh, yes. Believe him. It's done. Even if that sickness has protracted, the situation has protracted so long in Luke 13, 16, he looked at that woman and says, Is this not a daughter? Is the uh, a daughter of Abraham? How odd is she's been through this? 18 years. Jesus strengthened her. Today you'll be strengthened. Amen. Rise up. Shake your body, shake the shoulders, fling that arm, jump up. He has done it. Even if it has protracted like this woman and the sickness bent her over. Even if you've been bent and all Satan is showing you is the grave, the grave, the grave. This morning be strengthened in Jesus name. 
Amen. Rise up. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Just ask. John 7, 7. Ask, it shall be given to you. Seek, you will find. With it, that's his sure promise to those who are in him, who will come into him. There is power in store, already stored up. Stored up, bank of powers, which we're going to mention to round up this morning. It says, as many as believed, he given the power to become the sons. Even in danger, he says he would tread upon serpents and scorpions. Do you believe him? He giveth grace to the faint. So, what is this bank of power and grace <laughs> that we are called to? Pick them one. Power to live the godly life. Say to Mary, go and sin no more. Go. Says, as many as received him, he's given the power to become the sons of God. There is power, power of faith, even if that faith is like a mustard seed, as he told us. A small, mm, you will ask this mountain, it will move. Sure words of our Lord Yeshua, Lord Jesus. Amen. He says to him that believeth in trust in him, power to believe him. John 14, 1 says, You believe in the, fa the Father, believe also in me, in my Father's house and many mansions. Believe me. I'm going. Prepare a place. I'll come back to you. The power to believe and trust him, the power of peace. He says, My peace, I live with you. Amen. Not the word, not the one that the world give it, but the one that comes from you. Power of peace. That even in all going on, we dwell in perfect peace. We had peace yesterday, Fever and I. When we are on driving, the Lord brought us through from 70 miles per hour, and we're doing our 70 and just took us into the road 40 miles as we slowed down. Perfect God. All we had was blasting noise. We thought the car had blown off. And all of that. Blood of Jesus. And I looked to my left to smoke. And what came to my mind was my daughter by the left. And by the grace of God, bright and I said, Favor, jump out of the car. As soon as I bricked it, it stays. And we just came out and look. Whoa. What is this? Miracle. Look back, no car. Busy road. People speak through. No car coming. None in front. As soon as we came out from the car, we were looking. Streams of car coming with speed. The Lord held them somewhere. The tire had gone off from the bow joint and it's all on the floor. The mark on the road was heavy, amazing, amazing, Father. But there was peace, there was joy. There was peace, there was joy in there. Amen. Power to be strong and of good courage. He says, fear not. When he came to the disciples, he said, fear not. Courageous like Gideon, power to be there like Joshua, amen. The power to know that he can do all things. He said to Philip in the book of John, chapter 6, for the feed them. The Bible says, For he know what he will do. <laughs> Don't worry, Jesus knows what he will do. He knows he wants to show you some beautiful things and to show you his power. That water will not swallow you. He knows what he would do. That job, you will get it. He knows what he would do. It looks like you're not getting it now. Don't worry. He's preparing a place. Remember, he prepares meal, food, in the presence of our enemies. 
He anoints our head. There's an anointing coming unto you, anointing of wisdom to get the best. Amen. Power to endure, even in Matthew chapter 5 and 5. So rejoice when we go through those persecutions. As a good soldier of Christ, endure it. Amen. The power of wisdom and understanding. Like Daniel, he said to the disciples in Matthew chapter 13, he said to them, look, for them it is not given, but to you it is given to know the kingdom and to be revealed the things of Elohim. Powerful. So encouraging, brethren. Put it on. Say it out loud. Act it out when you get there. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Young people, this is for you to shine in your generation. Ask the Lord for wisdom. Ask him for understanding. He can only make you put you on top. He can only make you to rise above your fellows. What others are looking for, struggling for, you question it. Just knowing and exalting and praising and being in him. He's able to do all things. Power of discernment. He will. You will get to see the disciples that were ordinary men get to design just being with him. He's still with us. The power to be like him. Amen. That was a sure promise. That was a sure promise. That was also a prayer made for you and I. See, greater works shall we do than he if only we will believe. And we've believed. And he prayed for us in John 17 also concerning it. So walk in it. Amen. The power to understand that we are not of this world. It was also prayed for us. Power of holiness. Power of holiness all through. Matthew chapter 5 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall be called what? They should just see the Lord criteria to see him the power to preach the gospel he gave it to us in Matthew 28 the power I was speaking to evangelist Samantha in Malaysia this morning the power exuding from him is powerful the joy of being a ministry and an evangelist so much is all to us power over sickness all of us power over seeing satan and the world power over evil thoughts power over it to say no to any corruption to bad habits to bad friends to bad influence to power to say no others may i cannot I'm sealed with the power of God. I'm a special person. I'm a son of a king. Amen. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a holy generation. No. Power. Power to say no when you are enticed. Power to reject occultism. And every evil thing. It's holiday season now. Children are out there so many things it's also a time satan says okay you finished the classroom it's now my time to also put up another classroom say no to him he can't waste your time your holiday is to sleep and to enjoy and to praise the lord it's not to start another class with satan on the internet or out there on the field or on the street or carrying guns and knives and then doing evil no, it's a waste of your time. Don't take that tutelage. Don't allow him to put you in that classroom. It's a waste of your time. Put him off. It's holiday time now. For those of us who are working, don't allow him to give you another job. You've, you've labored a lot, a lot in the office. You need your rest. You need your sleep. You need your laughter. You need your quietness. Don't let him hit you up with the world. Don't let him take advantage of your holiday to spoil you with evil examples and drunkenness and revelings and then doing what you ought not to do. Don't let him at all be sealed in his power. Amen. And you can multiply this. Say no to him. Accept the love of Jesus. He's so strong. He's so strong. 
it covers it in cases is fantastic it's a daily experience is wonderful let us pray father we thank you this morning we give you praise Lord, even as we've had this, it's not enough to sit down and listen and to hear. Especially those in ministry. Satan has beaten to the left and to the right. Help them to see light. Help them to see roses growing among those thorns. Give them the assurance that you still love us. The little ones, young people, Father, open their eyes to see that dwelling in you is the best. You have the best holiday. And you have the best for us. Help each and every one of us to tap into this love. In Yeshua Jesus' name, Amen.